Hello and welcome to the next video in the A-Level Biology series. In this video we will look at inherited change. In the following two videos we will cover homologous chromosomes and predicting inheritance, gametogenesis and genetic variation, genetic disease and control of gene expression. Here are some key terms for this part of the course. Gene. This is a portion of DNA which acts as instructions or code to synthesize a gene product such as a protein or messenger RNA. Allele is a variant form of a gene. We inherit two alleles for each gene, one from each parent. Genotype. This is the genetic makeup of an individual, a complete set of genes. Phenotype. This is the physical characteristics of an organism which is determined by the genotype and the environment. Dominant. This refers to the relationship between two versions of a gene. The characteristic will present in the phenotype if there's only one copy. Dominant is denoted by a capital letter. Recessive. This is a characteristic which will appear in the phenotype if two copies are present. Recessive is denoted by a lowercase letter. Codominant. This means alleles are both expressed in the phenotype and neither are recessive, for example in blood groups. Locus. This is a fixed position of a gene on a chromosome. Alleles of a gene are found on the same positions of a chromosome pair. Homozygote is an organism containing two copies of the same allele. Heterozygote is an organism containing two different copies of alleles. And carrier a person can carry an allele which is not expressed in the phenotype but can be passed on to the offspring. Homologous chromosomes and predicting inheritance. Homologous chromosomes are pairs of chromosomes. They carry the same genes in the same locations and are the same size. Humans are diploid organisms. We have two sets of chromosomes in our nuclei, so we have two alleles for each gene. Each cell has 23 pairs of chromosomes, totaling as 46. 22 of the pairs are called autosomes and look the same in males and females. The 23rd pair, or the sex chromosomes, differ between males and females. Males have an X and Y chromosome and females have two copies of the X chromosome. Genetic diagrams. Genetic diagrams predict genotypes and phenotypes of offspring if two parents are crossed or bred by examining the parental gametes and predicting the appearance in the offspring. Gametes, also known as sex cells, the sperm and the egg, contain only one allele for each gene. When gametes of two parents fuse together during fertilization, the alleles combine to form the genotype of the offspring. With the knowledge of the parental genotype and genes, we are able to make predictions of the genotype and phenotype of the potential offspring. A monohybrid cross is a cross between two parents with different variation in one gene. So for example, in fruit flies, let's look at the inheritance of wing length. Normal wings are denoted by the capital letter N so this is a dominant trait. Vestigial or small wings are denoted by lowercase n. 
so this is a recessive trait. One pairing is homozygous for normal wings, so two capital N's, and the other pairing is homozygous for vestigial wings, two lowercase n's. This can also be shown in a Punnett square. The parental gametes are shown on top of the table split up. So if we look at the results, we can see the F1 generation will have a 100% chance in inheriting normal wings with a heterozygous phenotype. If we look at a Punnett square for the second generation of F2, the chances look different. The F2 parents have a heterozygous genotype with normal wings phenotype. Looking at the Punnett square, the offspring have a 25% chance of having vestigial wing phenotype with the homozygous recessive genotype. 25% homozygous dominant normal wings genotype and 50% genotype with normal wings phenotype. Codominance is when both alleles are expressed in the phenotype when neither one is recessive. One example in humans is sickle cell anemia. This is a genetic disease which affects the shape of red blood cells forming sickle shapes. These cells can stick together easily in the blood vessels and cause blockages. The gene affected is HBB and the abnormal gene causes dysfunction in beta-globin polypeptide which affects the overall structure of haemoglobin and hence its oxygen carrying ability. People who are homozygous for the normal haemoglobin do not have the disease. People who are homozygous for sickle haemoglobin do have sickle cell anemia. People who are heterozygous have an in-between phenotype called sickle cell trait. They have some sickle cell haemoglobin and some normal. The two alleles are co-dominant because they are both expressed in the phenotype. The diagram shows the possible outcomes of crossing two heterozygous individuals with sickle cell trait. There is a 25% chance of sickle cell disease, 50% chance of sickle cell trait, and 25% chance of normal haemoglobin. Now some genes have multiple alleles. For example, in the human ABO blood group system, there are three alleles for blood type. IO is the allele for blood group O. IA is the allele for blood group A. And IB is the allele for blood group B. IO is recessive and IA and IB are codominant. The diagram shows a cross between two parents with heterozygous blood group A and heterozygous blood group B. It shows that the offspring could have any of the four different blood groups. O, AB, A and B. Now on to dihybrid crosses. These look at two different genes which are inherited at the same time and contribute to a phenotype. For example, seed phenotypes in pea plants. Capital R equals round seed and small r is wrinkled seed. Capital Y is yellow seed and small y is green seed. The parental genotypes are capital R, lowercase r, capital Y, lowercase y. 
This means they are heterozygous. The phenotype is round yellow seed, as round and yellow are dominant genes. So now we split the parental genotype into the parental gametes and produce our diagram for the dihybrid cross. So you can see in the diagram there are nine round and yellow seeds. Three round and green seeds. Three wrinkled and yellow and one wrinkled and green. Round and yellow phenotypes will appear more often because they are controlled by dominant genes. Whereas the wrinkled and green, which are controlled by recessive genes, are more rare. Gametogenesis and genetic variation. Diploid cells contain two complete sets of chromosomes. In humans, our cells contain 23 pairs of chromosomes. Diploids are written as 2N. Haploid cells contain one complete set of chromosomes written as a lowercase n. Gametes or sex cells are haploid cells. Gametes are involved in sexual reproduction. These combine during fertilization to form a diploid zygote, a 2N. In humans, gametes are produced in organs called gonads. In males, sperm cells are produced in the testes by spermatogenesis. In females, egg cells are produced in the ovaries by eugenesis. Gametogenesis involves the process of mitosis to generate cells to go on to form the gametes. After this, the cells undergo meiosis to form haploid gametes. Meiosis is the process by which a single diploid cell divides twice to produce four haploid cells. There are two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. For sperm, meiosis 1 produces two haploid spermatocytes. The haploid spermatocytes undergo meiosis 2 to produce four sperm cells. For the egg, meiosis 1 produces one haploid secondary oocyte and a smaller haploid polar body which disintegrates. Meiosis 2 occurs with the secondary oocyte producing a single haploid egg cell and another polar body which is lost. Meiosis is crucial for increasing genetic diversity in gametes. There are two mechanisms to increase genetic diversity. Crossing over Non-sister chromatids exchange alleles. During meiosis 1, homologous chromosomes pair up and are very close, creating a crossing point called a chiasma. A section of chromatid can break off and rejoin with a section of chromatid on the chromosome. This results in a new combination of alleles on the two chromosomes. Independent assortment Due to the random alignment of homologous pairs during metaphase 1, different combinations of chromosomes are split into the daughter cells. This is shown as 2 to the power of 23, which is 8,324,608 different combinations. The full stages of meiosis are covered in more detail in one of our previous videos on the channel so we will not cover in today's video, but I would recommend that you watch that video for your revision. Now to summarise today's video. Dominant genes are always expressed in the phenotype, whether homozygous or heterozygous. 
Recessive genes are only expressed in the phenotype if the genotype is homozygous for the recessive gene. Codominance is when both alleles are expressed in the phenotype, for example, in blood group determination. Meiosis and gametogenesis are essential to providing genetic variation in the next generation. So this concludes today's video on inheritance and genetic variation. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope to see you next week for the final part of inheritance, which will focus on genetic disease and the control of gene expression.